guidance, how he has led us through uh, this tumultuous year. We send greetings to those that are watching by way of internet. We thank God for you uh, watching and tuning into this program. We hope that something will be said to be a blessing to you. And as always, thank you for your support. Thank you for all of the support you have given, and we're thanking you in advance for whatever support you might be led to give. If you so, are so inclined, you may uh, support us by way of uh, cash to app. The cash tag is dollar sign the Church of God in H. Or you can support by way of PayPal. You can find us there under Minister D. Bush at gmail.com. Also, if you have questions or comments, uh, you can email me. Once again, email address is ministerdbush at gmail.com. I read and answer all of my emails. I welcome your emails. So if you have a question, uh, feel free to uh, send out an email. And for those that are in the greater Houston area, we invite you to come uh, worship with us in uh, person. We have plenty of room to social distance. Uh, we meet each Sunday at approximately 10 o'clock uh, at 16027 North Freeway. Uh, we invite you to come where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. All right, we'd like to invite your attention to uh, the book of 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. Uh, the fifth chapter, First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, and we'll begin reading at verse 16. First Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, and we'll begin reading at verse 16. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and, and verse 16. And the word of the Lord says, Rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore or, or rejoice always. Regardless to what uh, we are facing, we should face it uh, with a heart of thanksgiving. Amen. And and I, I understand that there are times when that can be difficult. You know, uh, just lost your job, it can be hard to rejoice. Yes, in the death of a loved one, mm -hmm. it can be hard to rejoice. And, you know, this is the last Sunday of the year of 2020. Mm -hmm. And uh, 2020 has been a very uh, difficult year for me personally. <clears throat> you know, just a little over a month ago, I lost my father. That's a tough thing, but in the midst of it all, I understand that I still should rejoice. There's always, see, life is, is, is really about perspective. It's how you see a thing. You know, that's the old adage of, is the glass half empty or is it half full? And some people tend to be optimistic, uh, meaning they want to have a positive outlook on things, and then there are those that are pessimistic. They just have a negative look uh, outlook on things, regardless to uh, what's going on. But if you know the Lord Jesus, you should never have a negative outlook on anything because we know how the story ends. The story ends in our ultimate victory if we just stay the course. 
So the Bible says rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. And if there ever was a time to pray, it's your time to pray now. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, uh, uh, a lot of people don't pray until they get in trouble. And that's, that's why you can, people feel so overwhelmed because they don't have a prayer life. Anytime people are, are de, you know, depressed, and I'm not making light of depression, I, I'm not. I understand that there are some people who have a, a chemical imbalance with, that causes that and they need, you know, medical attention to address that. But at large, if you have a fervent prayer life, there's no way you could be depressed. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the spirit of the Lord will counsel with you in your prayer time. So the Bible, but the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. You should always be in a spirit of prayer. We, when you're driving down the road, you know, I know myself, I'm, I'm praying, I'm rebuking accidents, you know, and I, if I see somebody driving erratic, I'm saying, Lord, catch their mind. They're straightening them up because they, so they don't cause an accident. Pray without ceasing. And if, if we've learned anything through uh, uh, this, this, this past year, you, know, you better have a prayer line. You know, some people, um, I, I, I remember reading an article a, a couple of months ago how the, 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 the rate of suicide has have climbed exponentially. I, I, don't, I, I mean, I, I don't understand that because God is still in control. And at a moment's time, God can turn this thing around. Mm -hmm. But look at verse 18. It's kind of what we want to hone in on today. The Bible says, in everything, give thanks. In everything. In the, you know, that in this in this climate that we're in, people in food lines. People, millions of people without jobs. Mm -hmm. And you said, you mean to tell me these people ought to be thankful? That's exactly what I'm saying. They should be thankful that even in the food line, you should be thanking God. I don't have a job. You still should be thanking God. Because God, you that job is not your resource. The job is not your source. God is your source. That job is just a resource. In everything we go through, God, what she said, he said, in everything, give thanks, watch this, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Nothing can happen to you except God allow it. Mm -hmm. Now, I know, you know, people think, you think you can call the cause things to come upon yourself and to a degree you can but God can cut block you from doing stuff mm -hmm. God can snatch your finances to where you can't do something if he don't want you to do something he'll, he he can, he can prevent it God can 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 make your car stop working you, you could have been on wanting to go somewhere and the Lord could come along and, and and make your car not work so wherever you find yourself in life it was the will of God for you to be there. See, in everything, give yes, thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And, you know, people think that uh, if you listen to these false prophets on so-called Christian television, that life should just be a flower bed of ease. But I, I'm here to tell you, nobody's going to skate through this life without having problems. At some point, you're going to be faced with something. And you better learn how to give God the glory. I heard David say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. When it, when it was that time, you shouldn't give God glory. Now think about Job. You know, the Bible said Job was a perfect man. You know, he walked up right before the Lord. The Bible said he assured evil, meaning he 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 abstained from evil. And and God said he was a perfect man. And of course, we know all the things that he went through. 
See, he didn't do anything to cause that. But yet, God, God recommended him to say that. He said, have thou considered my servant Job? Yeah, because here it is, Job is going on, got a nice life. He's, he's wealthy. Got a nice life going on. And here the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? So, so now the Bible says right here, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And Job hadn't done nothing to anybody. And God recommends him to say that. Can, can God recommend you? Some of us don't want to face any trial. Some of us don't want to go through anything. And we will actually think that if you're going through something, then something must be wrong with you. You, you must have did something. Then somebody to put a root on me. You know, I'm, see, I'm from Louisiana. And there's, they had there's somebody that got a root on me. You know, they put a hex on me. See, they believe, some folks believe in that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I know I'm a child of God. You can't put nothing on me. Because great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You can't put nothing on me. Give in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Well, look at what verse, verse 19. Quench not the spirit. Don't stop praising God because you've gone through. He said, quench not the spirit. You know, the, the, if the spirit rising up in you, let, let the spirit have his way. How can you be around here singing and, and, and all of this going on? Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. See, a, a word can come to you in the middle of your struggle and believe that word. That word can come to you, man. You just down and out and it's saying, you coming out? It, it's hard to believe at the time, but you better latch on to it. Despise not prophesying. Right here, verse 21, he says, Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Hold fast to that which is good. You know, and I tell y'all all the time, uh, you know, get you a notebook and just go back over your life and write down what God has done for you. You know, well, you know what, in 1985, he did this. In 1990, he did that. And so, and when you find yourself going through, you, if you go back, you start going back on what God has brought you through, man, that, that'll build your faith up. And you, you that'll be, that minimizes what you're in now. Because I, I know he blessed me before, so he's the, and he, he, he's the same God. He's the same God. He brought me through all of that. This ain't, this, and this ain't, no, this ain't nothing either. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And you know, see, some people they get tempted mm -hmm. when they're in test, when they're in trial, they get tempted to want to go out and try something. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm living right, doing all this, and then look what happened. So I might as well. No, he said abstain from even the appearance of evil. Don't even do nothing. It, it, the appearance of it. No, because he told us in one place, if I rise, I rise and have to exceed the, the rising of the Pharisees. <clears throat> At verse 23, watch this now. And the word of God says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's you, you want to be preserved blameless because the Lord is coming. Mm -hmm. See, you can't have any, you can't have any all in your heart. You can't have the Bible in one place it said he's coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle mm -hmm. or any such thing. You you can't and, and, and you can't allow difficulty to, to put stuff into your heart. 
You could, the Bible said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus. Watch this. Faithful is he that calleth you who also would do it. God is faithful. He's going to do what he said. And our, our timing don't necessarily line up with God's timing. You may want it done right now. You may want it done right now. But whenever God show up, it's fine. Okay, go to St. John now. St. John. St. John chapter 16. Amen, amen. Some, some people about to throw in the towel. Just hold on. St. John chapter 16, get verse 33. St. John chapter 16 and then verse 33. The word of God says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In me, you might have peace. There's peace when, when you know that you know that you know the Lord Jesus. The Bible says there's no, therefore not no condemnation of those that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. See, these things have I said, have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. It doesn't matter what's going on. If you're in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. there should be some calm. These things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. Because what watch this? In the world ye shall have tribulation. So, so why do we why are we getting perplexed? Why are we getting all thrown off? Because he said, in the world ye shall have tribulation. Mm -hmm. We know this stuff is gonna come. And in uh, Owen of uh first uh, Peter, he said, thinking not strange concerning the fiery darts and the trials, which is which which is to try you. In the world, you shall have tribulation. Well, look, look, look at what he says here. But be of good cheer. That, that, doesn't that line up with what we just read? In everything, give thanks. He said, but be of good cheer. Watch this. I have overcome the world. He's overcome. Now, back up here in chapter 16. I want to read a little bit of uh, verse 1. We'll read maybe the verse 1, first couple of verses there. Because I want to understand understand why he said he told him that. Mm -hmm. Chapter 16 and verse 1 now. Okay, now he says, these things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. Don't So you won't get upset. So you don't get thrown off. Mm -hmm. he, he's, 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 he's letting them know what is about to happen. See, if you didn't know, you, you, you're blindsided. But if you, if I, if I understand, if I know what I'm facing, then I can prepare for it. Now, and he told, now we read, say, pray without ceasing. So I'm, I'm preparing to deal with this work. Look at verse two, watch this. They shall put you out of the synagogue. He's letting them know. Mm -hmm. They're going to put you out of the synagogue. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think he does God's service. Some, these, he let them know, some of y'all are going to be killed. Mm -hmm. And the people are going to think they're doing me a favor. That's right. he's, he's preparing them for what they're about to deal with. And look at verse 3. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father or me. <clears throat> but these things have I told you that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you then. So, so you can remember. You, you'll be able to go back and remember. Well, well you know, he said that was going to happen. 
So, you know, that's why we shouldn't be, why are we continually blindsided? If you would read this word and apply this word and study this word, you 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 won't not this this pandemic stuff shouldn't be, be a surprise. Because he said in the last day that there will be pestilence. So why why we shouldn't be surprised? The Bible is being fulfilled more and more each day. We, we, we shouldn't be caught off guard. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. So now I was here with you because now Jesus is, is, is he's preparing them because he's getting ready to go to the cross. And then shortly after that, he's going back to the Father. So he's, I got to get you guys ready because I'm not going to physically be here. So now you have to be able to deal with this stuff. So, so we know that situations and circumstances are going to arise. We should be able to deal with it because he gives us his spirit. We're supposed to have the spirit of God in us so we should know how to handle difficult situations. Amen, amen. Okay, go now to uh, uh, Philippians. Philippians, praise the Lord. What if, and I pose the question, what if 2021 is no better than 2020? I pray God that that's not the case. But what if 2021 is no better than 2020? What are you going to do? In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you. <coughs> Philippians Chapter 4. We pick it up at verse 4. Philippians chapter 4. And at verse 1, the word of God says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. And then, now, now, he did not say rejoice in the Lord when everything is going well. Rejoice in the Lord when you get a promotion. He said rejoice in the Lord always. Not sometimes. And again, I say rejoice. Watch this. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Let your modesty, your, your conservativeness, we should be known for our modesty. We should be known for our conservativeness. Be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. So we shouldn't be around here worrying about stuff. Be careful for nothing, but in everything. See, that, and that, that says everything. But in everything, by prayer, that's why it's so important to have a prayer life. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. See, we, we have a right to go to God. And we don't we don't take advantage of to see the saints are suffering and we don't even use, we, we have access to all of heaven's resources, but we don't use them. We'll sit around and worry and try to figure things out instead of going to God. He told us to cast all your cares upon him for he cared for us. But we don't do that. Be careful for nothing. Nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. But look, 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 verse 7, watch this. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God. 
Man, it's nothing like nothing like peace. You know, everybody else is, is, is just, you know, at their wit's end, pulling their hair out, drinking, doing drugs. And here you come because I, I got in touch with hell. The peace of God, which passes all, it, 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 people don't, can't even understand how is it that you're so calm? Mm -hmm. How is it that you're so, you know, that you're not erratic? Mm -hmm. I got the peace of God in my life. And how did I attain the peace of God? Because I pray without ceasing. I'm in constant communion with God. But see, it's just not, but you know how we are. If just imagine how how we are. If somebody called you and they hadn't talked to you in two or three years asking you for something. Well, how did you how now you know how you feel? Now here you hadn't hadn't said nothing to me in two years, and now you want me to bless you. Come on now. How do you think God feels? You've been doing everything you've been enough to do, and now you in a jam. Oh, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Well, hold up. I mean, wake up morning after morning, never say thank you. You know, thank you something because of your job. Now you don't have this job. You, you, first, you didn't even thank me for the job to begin with. Now you don't have it. Now you want it. But if you are in constant, you have a prayer life, you have constant communication with God, then I, I know God. I see this one thing about I know God got my back. I know He does. Because I spend I spend time with Him. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Okay, for the sake of time, now drop down to verse 11. Amen, amen. We're in Philippians chapter 4 at verse 11 now. And the Bible says, Not that I speak in respect of one. Watch this, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith be content. Whatever, whatsoever state I am. He said, I, Paul says here, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Now, it doesn't mean I, I, I don't necessarily have to like everything that's going on, but I'm not going to sit around and just incessantly complain about it. You can find joy, you can find contentment in any situation that you're in. Yes, you can. <clears throat> He says here, I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Now, Paul is writing this while he's in prison. And, and the thing about it, he hadn't done nothing to be there, but yet he's saying, whatever state I am, therewith I can be content. And Paul, Paul's testimony, oh my God, Paul had a talk about how he was beaten, left, he was stoned, Left for dead. He was shipwrecked twice. You know, he, he talked about how he spent the night in the sea twice on two different occasions. You know, and can you imagine all the folks around him just screaming and hollering? And here, Paul just is calm. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm out here in the sea. But God will take care of me. I, whatever state I'm in. You know, a lot of us would drown because we panic. You, that's why most people drown, because they panic. If you can just learn to calm yourself down. See, see, you can't think properly when you panic. If you just calm yourself down, then you can think properly. You make irrational decisions. <clears throat> Not that I would speak. In respect to one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, there will be content. Look, 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 watch this verse 12. He says, For I know, he said, I know both how to abound, 
I know how to be a base and I know how to be a bound. I know how to when when I know how to act when things ain't going so well. I know how to be when it's low. But you know, some folks can't, they can't handle being a base. Can't handle it. <clears throat> he said, I know how to abound. Oh, let things go well for them. Let things start to go well for them. Let's go get, let them get a couple of dollars. You gonna, and matter of fact, in a couple of weeks here, when folks start getting their income tax, you're gonna see a change in some folks. Hmm. Yeah. You're gonna still change. Mm -hmm. For and then when that when once that income tax run out, yeah, they're gonna go right back. I know how to be a base and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, watch this, I'm instructed to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And to suffer need. See, see, if when if you stay even killed, then people. Don't, don't stop telling everybody all your business. Mm -hmm. My God, some people, I think, they just, they put all their business out there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but verse 13, watch this. He said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. Mm -hmm. I can do all things. I can go through this because Christ when, when my strength is, I, I'm going as far as I can go, then, then the Lord will kick in. The Lord will kick in with some strength. I, I'm, I'm not doing this of, of myself. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Amen. Amen. Uh, see, see uh, you know, it's all about perspective. It's all about perspective, just, just how you see things. Do you see yourself as, vic as victorious or do you see yourself as defeated? You know, I think about this story about how when Moses sent out the, uh, uh, you know, the spies, to, he wanted to, them to go spy out the promised land. And uh, when they came back with their report, mm -hmm. there were two different reports. Yes. You know, both of them saw the same thing. Both sets of people saw the same thing. But they had two totally different reports. How do you see things? Do you see yourself as victorious or do you see yourself as defeated? You know, Caleb came back and, and made, gave his report and then he said, let us go up at once for we are well able. Let us go up at once. But then the other fellas were saying, well, wait a minute now. There were some big fellas. We saw, he said, let, 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 go, go, go get that right quick. Uh, numbers, uh, numbers. <coughs> numbers, uh, chapter 13, I believe it is. Numbers chapter 13. Do you see yourself the way the word of God sees you? Or do you see yourself the way the world sees you? Numbers chapter uh, 13. Uh, and we just begin reading at verse 25. Numbers chapter 13 and at verse 25. Amen, amen. Okay. Numbers chapter 20, uh, chapter 13 and verse 25. Watch this and what it does is, and they returned from searching they returned from searching of the land after 40 days and they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel and to the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and brought back word unto them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land now now if, if you go back up a couple of verses they talk about how they cut down uh, some great it, it, it was so many great they had to have two people to carry you know they, you know, so they, then they brought that back with them to show how, uh, 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 you know, fruitful this land was. <clears throat> okay, and in verse uh, twenty-seven, the Bible says, 
And they told him and said, we came into the land whither thou sent us. And surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of, oh, oh, it's a good land. It's a good land. But now understanding it's been promised to them. Mm -hmm. it's, it's ours. Because mm -hmm. God said it. You know, one verse of scripture said, whose report do you believe? <clears throat> okay, verse 28, watch this then. I got to hurry on. Verse 28, watch this. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great and more we saw the children of Anak, the Amalekites dwell in the lands to the south and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Look at verse 30. Watch this here. Like all, of, all of this that he just mentioned. All of these challenges. But look what Caleb says here. And Caleb still with the people before Moses. Look, listen, listen. He said, let us go up at once. Y'all, come on, let's go. That, that's a good land over there. Let's go get it. It, it belongs to us. I mean, this land is flowing with milk and honey. How do you see yourself? He said, let us go up at once and possess it. Let's go get it. Watch this. For we are well able to overcome it. We are able. Didn't we just read over in Philippians? He said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Mm -hmm. We're well able to overcome it. Okay, now look at verse 31. Boy, watch, this, watch this. But the men that went up with him said, now both of them, they saw the same thing. We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. They got the God of Isaac, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob with them. God have brought them through all sorts of things, all the all those plagues that He put on each down there in Egypt. They witnessed that. They they were. Pinned up against the Red Sea and God opened up the Red Sea. They walked through on dry land. They had seen all of that, but yet, who do? Look at how they saw themselves. And we're the same way. God has brought us out over and over again. He has healed us over and over again. Whose report are you believing? <clears throat> so, so watch this now. He says, uh, but the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. Mm -hmm. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched out, searched into the children of Israel saying, the land through which we ha have gone and searched it, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And, and there we saw giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. Look, 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 look at this. And, and we were in our own sight. Look at how they are looking at themselves. He said, in, in our own sight. I'm telling you how you feel about yourself. It matters. Mm -hmm. And our own sight as grasshoppers. And so were we in their sight. They don't know how the people saw them. Mm -hmm. okay. Whose report do you believe? How do you see yourself? Mm -hmm. My God, I go to the scripture. And he said, I'm, he said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm more than a con. I heard him say, I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. Mm -hmm. he, he said, I'm the head and not the tail. Mm -hmm. I'm above and not beneath. Mm -hmm. Whose report do you believe? Amen, amen. 
Okay, I gotta get ready to let you go now. Go over to uh Romans now. Romans, amen. Chapter 8. We gotta get ready to get out of here. Yes, we face uh, 2020. It has been very, very difficult, but we can still rejoice. Amen. We can give God the glory. And I don't know what's going, what is what's in 2021, but I know who I know that God is gonna be with me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8 I'll begin reading at verse 28 Romans chapter 8 and at verse 28 Amen, amen Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 The word of God says And we know See, see and we know We This is something, this something we ought to know mm -hmm. It's like 2 plus 2 I know what 2 plus 2 is it doesn't matter what anybody coming in and trying to tell me. I know two plus two is four. And we know, watch this, that all things work together for good to them that love God. And are to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, we, we're going to be conformed to the image of his son, but that wasn't no patty cake. Mm -hmm. well, well, look at verse 30. Watch this. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified, that we shall, that, <clears throat> what, that, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who shall be against us? So whatever, whatever is in 2021, I'm, I'm going to be all right. Mm-hmm. But look at verse 32. This is the this is the verse that nobody wants to read. Mm -hmm. He that spared not his own son. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not be how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? But you know what all things include? All things include suffering. And that's the part we don't want. We don't like that part. <clears throat> he should give us all things. We're going to have some good times. And we're going to have some bad things. But we are being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. So we just got to learn how to rejoice always. Amen. Amen. We'll leave it right there. We thank God for you. We thank God for all things in the name of the Lord. I hope I said something to help somebody. Praise the Lord. Amen. We know the words are not from us all stand. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present your fathers before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Amen.